Yes. Whoa. <laughs> Good morning. Um, so I sort of half missed all the hands raised on Gutenberg, but how many people have heard of it? Do you still want my talk? <laughs> how many people have used it? Oh, okay. Well, hopefully I can bring some new insights um, because it's more than I expected. Uh, Gutenberg is sort of the hottest topic on WordCamps at the moment. When you look at WordCamps around the globe, it's, it's on every agenda because it's, it's going to come. We know that. Um, and yeah, I find in my own client group that a lot of people have not heard about it or haven't seen it. So um, therefore, I felt the urge on, on training my clients and explain them what's coming uh, instead of them going for their updates when WordPress 5 is coming and they go like click and the next morning they want to publish something and I go like, what's this? Because it's going to bring some change. And I'll, for the people who haven't seen it, I'll show you that in a minute. Um, so first, a little bit about myself. I see quite a few familiar faces, um, but I'm Monique Doubleman. I'm self-employed under the name Boo Media, or um, Boo Media, as some call it. I don't know why. Um, I call myself a digital strategist, which is a difficult word in English <laughs> as well. And I'm an information architecture uh, architect, which is part of uh, design that uh, covers structuring of content, um, because I think there's a lot to be gained in that part of publishing and um, website building as well. Well, I'm from 1971, so you can do the math. Um, I started being self-employed in 2007. I have my own web shop, and I've been working with WordPress professionally since 2011. So that's a little bit about me. Um, so yeah, my, my talk's not going to be very technical because we probably have a lot of different people from different backgrounds here. So if you want technical background from developers, there's probably quite a few people here who can fill you in on that. But I'm going to tell you what it is, why do we need it, how does it look and feel, and I'm sort of not really pressured, but people seem to do live demos on this, so I, I'm going to do one as well. And uh, the big question, when can we expect it? And I'd like to open with this quote by um, this man called Matt Mullenweg, who we saw before. And he said in one of his blog posts, we called it Gutenberg for a reason. And what that reason is, I'll explain it later. And he said as well, it's about a lot more than just blocks. Our Gutenberg moves every part of the WordPress ecosystem forward. And that's quite a big vision, actually. And is Mike Gruppen here already? Mm. Not yet. Anyway, um, he taught me that using a little history in your talks can be a good thing. So I thought, oh, I'm going to use that as well. And I have a question. Does anyone know who this happy guy is? <laughs> good to work? Something else? Koster. Martin Luther Koster. Does anyone know why I'm showing him? Yes. Can anyone tell me that as well? <laughs> Ramkes. Oh. <laughs> Does anyone want to tell me? <laughs> yeah. So people say he's the actual discoverer of book printing. There's discussions about that as well. I did graphical school here in Rotterdam in the the 20th century at some point. So when I was there, uh, we learned that Laurens Jansson Koster uh, was the Dutch guy who invented book printing. And ah, that German guy, Gutenberg, nah, Dutch, the Dutch invented it. So he's even got a statue in Haarlem, when you go to the main square in Haarlem. So we called it Gutenberg for a reason. We may have called it Koster for a reason, which would have been a good name, but what is his name? Um, going back a little bit, um, this guy turned out to be a fraud. <laughs> you could, well, I'm not sure if he was a fraud, but um, in the end, he wasn't the one who invented it. And now all the credits go to Gutenberg. Actually, he didn't invent book printing, but what Gutenberg did is um, he invented um, the, the characters in wood 
Uh, before that, there was um, block printing already, but they did full pages, like one page per print. And what he did is he invented like those typesets that you could combine into anything you want. And that was pretty revolutionary in printing. So blocks, block printing. That's sort of where Matt Mellenweg got his inspiration from. Like instead of publishing a full page, we're gonna now publish in blocks. So there's your history part. And what Gutenberg is gonna do in the first place, it's gonna replace the classic editor. So it's not the new editor, it's gonna, like he said, be, it's gonna be a revolution in WordPress itself, but we're gonna see it in the first place in the editor. And when we say the classic editor, well, it is classic because it's been there for 14 years and um, that's ancient in web history. I mean, 14 years ago, what were we doing on the web? I found one of my old websites from 1999, I think, on Yahoo GeoCities. I don't know if anyone's been publishing on Yahoo GeoCities. Well, this is a bit younger, but still. And this is what the old editor looks like and that's probably familiar for some people, most people here. I'm going to try and do this. And okay, we can work with this, but it's not very flexible. Um, so to move WordPress forward, the idea of a new system uh, was uh, created called Gutenberg, codename Gutenberg. And besides the editor, there's a lot of other rich content that, that you can't really create very easily with the classic editor. So we have distributed content, it's all in one place, like one big screen. Uh, we use widgets, we have menus, it's all over the place. And Gutenberg is supposed to bring that all together to give you a new revolutionary publishing experience. We're here already. <clears throat> so um, I've been spamming the internet that I was gonna give you a demonstration with a lot of cat videos and get jiffies, but there was a thing in the news this week that I thought would be a better um, example. And, let me see this. <laughs> Who has not heard of Lee Towers? Good. Lee Towers is a Rotterdam icon. And uh, so I thought it would be a good idea for my demo to create a fan page uh, about Lee Towers. So that's uh, what I'm going to treat you on, too. <laughs> and um, so I installed uh, a local version of WordPress with Gutenberg pre-installed, and it's now a um, um, uh, plugin. And when you install the plugin and you create a new post, I shouldn't breathe. This looks quite different. Let's see if we can get the full screen, yeah. Um, so yeah, this looks totally different from the classic editor. And uh, I've been working it for quite a while, uh, so I'm, I'm used to it now. But when you see this for the first time, it, it <coughs> might be sort of shock, <laughs> like what has happened to all the buttons that I was seeing in the old editor. Um, so yeah, they're gone. And um, that's not easy for everyone. So let's see, we can add a title like we used to. Um, so, uh, what's a good title for a fan page? Lee Towers fan page, or is it a bit boring? We love Lee. We love Lee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, maybe um, his song text from one of his big hits, I can see clearly now. We can paste that here. And you can see this is now one block. But when you actually edit from that, you make a new block. So when you write in Gutenberg, let me turn this off. Okay. Oh, well, I'll just leave it. Um, you can enter new blocks for every paragraph that's there. You can also insert blocks by the plus sign that they're still working on the interface, so the last version now gives you a plus sign next to a block, but before it was only here, and they're still working on, on making this nicer and, and more usable. 
Um, so we lovely. Um, what would be nice to uh, give it a big image. And I've. Oh, that was still the cat version. So. <laughs> Would you prefer the cat version? No, I'll do that another time. We'll just have fleet towers. Okay, let's see. Just scrape some of the web. So here's one cover image, and you can put text over that. And with this um, block on the side here, you can get information about the block that you're actually editing. So you can, with a cover image, make uh, a more dimmed or a less dimmed uh, background over it. You can align the text at some point, add additional classes if you want. Um, what else can we do? It's very easy to upload galleries now. And um, me and Lee go way back. You don't know that, but we were neighbors at some point. And I asked my dad, he's been scanning old uh, slides and he found these slides from when he was doing a gig at uh, my uh, old primary school back in the 70s. And you can just pick those up and just throw them here. And Gutenberg makes its own gallery just like that from the images. So here you can see Young Lee on the rooftop of the school. And that's my, my mom, my grandpa, my brother, who was going to be here today, but he's not. So did that for him. So that that's, wasn't that easy in the classic editor. Um, embedding is a nice new feature as well. And what, what I find a really nice trick that is not very visible, but what I learned in WordCamp US when I saw a professional demo, you can use the forward slash when you're in a block and then start typing and, um, for instance, find um, columns. Because what you can now do is call it humor. I don't know what that is. You can add columns, text columns, or what is still in experimental phase, experimental columns. And you can paste text in those columns. But um, this is a pretty new feature that you can, uh, besides text, you can also paste or nest other blocks in the columns. So um, this wasn't possible before. You can now add uh, an image here. Uh, hey. That's not going to go in the right place. Demo failure, sorry. <laughs> I've been practicing this so much. OK. You get the idea about the columns, right? Um, another feature that I quite like is uh, what was called reusable blocks and now is called saved blocks. You can um, add, for instance, oh, a quote. I saw a lovely quote by Lee. My name is for Qualität. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> this is... So again, with the forward slash, I can look for a quote. No blocks found. Very well. Then we'll look it up this way. Oh, the full quote. Well, we'll do that one. Quote blocks. So instead of putting this all in from like the classic editor from one line, you, you actually create a block per type of content and you can move them around. So you're more flexible in like setting up um, your pages and make the, the content richer. Um, embedding is, is a lot easier, I think, as well. And I'll show you, like, I've been looking for Lee Tower's Twitter account, but he's not, not very active. So we're just going to copy whatever Twitter URL and paste that. Um, there's a lot of embed options as well. And you can find here the Twitter embed and just paste the URL and embed that in your page.
And the last thing I want to show you, because I can't show you all the blocks that are possible here, but um, there's still a lot of blocks that are being created in Gutenberg as well. Um, maybe a media block? That would be a nice one to finish with. YouTube, because what's Lee without music? And yes. So you can just, you don't have to do anything with iframes or whatever, you just paste in the YouTube URL. And there we have him. Do I have sound? <laughs> So let's see how this looks. So the backend is more like visual uh, display. This one's crap. I should delete that one. Let's go. OK. Edward? We could have error now, but I'll come back to that later. Okay, so I'll update. I think Gutenberg's got a bit of a problem with the towers here. No, <laughs> yeah? Okay, so it's not Lee Towers. <laughs> Happy to see that. <laughs> this is why I did this. Okay. <laughs> This working? <laughs> oh. Okay. Yeah, he, he's got his audience singing along. So come on, don't let me make a fool of me myself here. <laughs> Sorry? Okay, I'll let you go. So. This was my little live demo, so I um, hope you got a bit of an idea what you can expect. In Gutenberg, let's go back to the presentation, which is more of a safe area for me. So, Gutenberg is definitely coming to your house. And the big question is when? It's a question I've been asked, I ask myself all the time. And the answer is with the release of WordPress 5.0. So when is this? Well, when Gutenberg is ready for it. And when is Gutenberg ready? Well, when WordPress 5.0 will be released. So we're in a loop at the moment. In December, um, Matt Millenweg said they estimated for the end of April. And looking where we are now, I don't think that's very realistic. Um, a lot of work needs to be done. but. When I see where we came from, when I saw it the first time at WordCamp Europe last year, it has definitely improved and it's, it looks very promising. So maybe not the end of April, but maybe June, I don't know, maybe end of the year, when it's ready. <laughs> Big question is, are you ready when it's coming? And you can only be ready uh, by preparing yourself for uh, Gutenberg. You can wait till it comes. You can totally ignore it. I don't think it's a good idea to, to ignore new uh, innovations. Um, we, we're not working with MS-DOS anymore, are we? We're, we're perfect, 5.1. We, we've embraced new technology and, and improvements of programs that we were scared of in the first time, like, oh, this new interface. We, we, we hate change. That's, that's a human nature. Um, and there's a lot of talking about Gutenberg, whether it's good or not for uh, WordPress. I personally um, really like it, and I think it's really going to change the way people can publish it without installing external uh, page builders and stuff like that. So if you want to prepare, because Gutenberg is still uh, in beta, um, it's best to install a local copy uh, of your website and a local installation, download the plugin, and test your theme and plugins to see how they work with um, WordPress and Gutenberg. 
There's a lot of initiatives about testing where you can get information, and I've copied one here, and that will be in my resources. I'll show it you later. But uh, Daniel Bachuber, he has uh, created a repo where you can look up uh, plugins, whether they're tested on compatibility with um, for, um, Gutenberg. There's still a lot of plugins that need testing, so um, if you're in for testing, <laughs> you can help him out and help yourself and the rest of the community as well. And play with it. Try it. Try rebuild existing posts and pages. And don't be afraid of change. And if you see something buggy uh, that happens, report it, because it will help improve the next version of Gutenberg. And it won't hurt, I, I promise you. you. You can just try it. It's, it's not going to harm you. But what if you're not ready yet? Yet. Because you will be ready at some point. But I can understand that some websites that are fully customized for certain customers are not really waiting for this new editing experience. Well, there will be a classic editor plugin that you can download and you can work the way you're used to. So you don't really need to worry about it too. And there's also for the people who, don't, who aren't very technical and want to play around with Gutenberg as well. Um, Tom J. Noel um, created Frontenberg, which is a front-end visual um, Gutenberg editor that you can play around with. You can't save anything, but it's a very low-profile way of using it and trying it out. So yeah, I'm coming to the end of my talk. Um, I've made a page um, where I've sort of saved all kinds of resources and tips on Gutenberg that you can read on. Uh, another few talks from WordCamp as well. Good talks by Morton Rand Hendrickson and then another few people from the US. And that was it. So thank you for your attention. Uh,